Welcome to the Connection Church. My name is Rowdy and I'm one of the pastors here. We're so excited that you joined us for church today. I wanna say we have an interactive service. The only way you can be interactive is if you follow these four things. The first thing is chat it up. It's what church is all about, just engaging in conversation and sharing with people what God is doing in your life. So whatever platform you're watching on today, YouTube, TCC Live, or even Facebook, make sure you're chatting it up in the chats and sharing with people what God is doing in your life. The second thing is text it up. Hopefully you have your phone. If it's your first time here, you're our VIP. Everything we do here at the church is with you in mind. So text the word welcome to 512-359-3400. We want to get a free gift. We want to give you one of Pastor Cole's books. Just say thank you for being here. We also have a QR code available that you can just take a screenshot of and we can get all information on you and let you know what's moving and who, how God's moving in the house today. The third thing is share it up. We don't want you to miss what God is doing today, but we don't know who God wants to hear the message today. So we want you to make sure you're sharing that up on whatever platform. Just hit the good news, hit share, and let people know what God is doing in the house. The fourth thing, kids it up. If you have kids running around, we want to get you to send them to connectionkidsonline.com. They have interactive service, interactive time of worship. They have games and all kinds of activities. Make sure you get them on there. That way you can focus in on what God wants to do today. I got a big announcement. I hope you're ready for it. We are launching Connection Groups. It's an amazing time. We're so excited. We have online groups and we also have in-person groups. So whichever one you feel comfortable with, I want to push you to just text the word group to 512 359 3400 if you're interested in connecting and being engaged and staying connected together as a community make sure you text that word group to that number also other big news alert we're starting watch parties i don't know what that is right it doesn't make sense it is just to get together as a family and set up a watch party and watch a service in a house together with a community if you're too far from either one of our campuses to be in person set up a watch party to get more information, you can go to connectionchurch.org backslash watch parties. You can find all the info right there. So with all that being said, we're getting ready for our time of worship. Wherever you're at, whoever you're with, I want to invite you to stand up and let's worship God together today.
Hey, I want to share with you uh, some news that I found 
and some studies that I found from CDC that had stated that through this corona craziness, 40% of Americans have come out saying that I'm struggling with mental health issues or a form of depression. And even 11% of Americans have said that they're seriously considering suicide or having suicidal thoughts. And I believe that's a direct um, reflection of the season that we're in that says that we can't be together um, in, in groups or numbers of, of people that we don't directly live with. We have to wear masks to protect our face and our emotions and what we're feeling um, and just being socially distant uh, from people. I believe that's the season that we're in right now. But I also know that in, in with youth and with church and with myself personally that God created us to be um, together in groups. And 2,000 years ago or so, the early church started this um, with groups and they were leading together and going through the Bible and just being in community. And now the same thing 2,000 years later, we're still doing it here at the Connection Church. They're called Connection Groups. And I want to encourage you, whatever you're feeling, whatever you're going through, you were not meant to go through it alone. It's not going to change everything. It's not going to fix it all, but it gives you a space to talk to somebody and to also realize when you look in the mirror, you're not the only one dealing with what you're dealing with. There are people around you that are going through the same things you're going through. So if you're feeling that way and you want to just get plugged in and maybe you're scared or you're nervous, I want to encourage you, just take a step of faith. Ask God what group he wants you to be in, the relationships that he wants you to be around and surrounding yourself with. Text the word group to 512-359-3400. I'm not trying to sell anything to you. I just want you to know when you're giving here at the Connection Church, you're giving to something that's way bigger than what just happens inside of these four walls in our beauty campus or our San Marcos campus or even with you online. You're giving something to, to life change, to something that just happens um, when you take that step of faith and build into a relationship with God and with the people that God has placed in your life. There are many ways that you can give here at the Connection Church and they'll pop up on your screen. You can text any amount to give. You can visit our website. You can even use our mobile app and then you can also mail your gift in. Will you pray with me? God, thank you for what you're doing um, in this church. God, I pray for the other person on the other side of the screen, God, that you would just uh, meet them at the place that they're at, that they wouldn't be looking for um, a big flashy sign, a big flashy call out, God, that they would just be listening to the small uh, still voice that's guiding um, them to, to what you want for them. God, I just pray for peace um, in, in our country and in our, in our state. God, I just pray for Hayes County right now, God, the people that are hurting all over from various different reasons. God, that you would um, instill something in their hearts that would say they need you, um, God, and that we would know that we need you now more than ever. I pray for this offering, God, that you would bless it and multiply in only ways that you can. And I pray for Pastor Cole's message, that you deliver something, God, that you would allow it to intercept in our hearts and just we would receive it and be able to apply it directly um, as soon as we close our laptops. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, I'm Cole Phillips, the lead pastor of the Connection Church, and I want to welcome you today from wherever you're joining us from, especially those of you who are logging in for the first time, you're joining us for the first time, whether you're in San Marcos, if you're in Buda, or you are anywhere, anywhere really, we have people from all over the place who are checking out what God is doing through the Connection Church as we're connecting people with God connecting with one another, and ultimately we are here to, to see people, to help people enter into a brand new connection with God. And uh, this is an exciting time, you know, um, especially since pro sports are coming back. I know there are a lot of people that are super excited about pro sports coming back. And uh, 
How about them Cowboys? Can I hear it for the Cowboys? All right. So uh, I know I'm not the pastor who usually is talking with you about the Cowboys, but you know, last weekend they had the first game with head coach Mike McCarthy, and he made a questionable decision at the end of the game that probably cost them the game, right? Instead of going for a tying field goal in the game against the Rams, uh, instead, they were, they were fourth down and, and three yards from, uh, from a first down. And so what they decided to do was to go for it. And Dak Prescott, he threw uh, a short pass over to C.D. Lamb. C.D. Lamb was then just beautifully tackled. And he, uh, then, the, then it turned over, right? It turned over. And so... He, you know, really this decision probably was a mistake that cost them the game. Now, here is what Lamb said about it. He said, that's definitely one of the plays that I wish that I had back, but live and learn. He said, it's not really a rookie mistake, but it was definitely a mistake from a rookie. And we all are guilty of making those kinds of mistakes, right? Those, those moments that we wish we could have a do-over. Well, I want you to know that we have a God who is a God of the do-over. Aren't you glad that God yeah. wants, to, he wants to give us a, a fresh start and a second chance? And I want to talk about that today because we've all had a taste of failure. And failure is no f fun at all. It's a lot more fun to be on the winning side. And so today, I want us to talk about, about Two guys, really. One guy who he seemed like he was always striving, but he ended up separated from God. Another one who he was, uh, he was very selfish, and yet at the end he ended up uh, saved. He ended up uh, f experiencing God's security. Um, and, and so we're looking at this most famous story that Jesus ever told. In, pro in fact, it probably the most famous story ever told in Luke chapter 15. And I want to kind of remind you, you can turn in your Bibles, but I want to remind you about the story and kind of what happened in this story. Remember, there was this dad, and he had two sons. The younger son comes to his dad and says, Dad, I want my inheritance right now. And so the dad gives him what he asked for, and he takes the money, he runs off, he heads over to Vegas where he blows all of his money on wild living. He, he uh, is playing the, the slots in the casinos. He's, um, he's picking up prostitutes. You know, he is, he is living it up. He probably bought some, some fine Louis Vuitton, you know, and he, he just had, he, he had the, the fashion going on until he ended up completely broke. And then a recession hits, and the only job that he can get is like cleaning the bathrooms of the gas station. I mean, he was at the lowest of the low, to the point where finally uh, he was hungry, he was broke, and he said, I got to go back home and uh, go back home to my dad. And, and when he goes back home, dad welcomes him home, and they throw this huge celebration. It was this beautiful thing. But, but thinking about this younger son, maybe you can identify with this younger son. You know, if you think about him, he was almost sociopathically selfish. I mean, this guy, at one point, it was all about him. It was about what he wanted. And, and he, in fact, thought that his father was holding out on him something good that he was missing out. A lot of us, you know, we feel like that sometimes, that, that God maybe is trying to keep something good from us when, in fact, God wants something good for you. So when he took the money, he ran away. The money ran out, and, and you know, he went from the palace to the pigsty. What he was really looking for was freedom. He wanted to be free, but in the process of trying to pursue his, his own freedom, his own way, he ended up becoming a slave. In, in John 8, 34, Jesus says this. He says, very truly, I tell you, 
everyone who sins is a slave to sin. You see, the selfish son was a slave to his sinful choices that he was making. I mean, he was, he was reduced to, the Bible says he was feeding hogs that were being raised for uh, idolatry, for, for idol worship. And at this point, you know, when the son was at his lowest, you look at him and you think he has almost nothing left. And yet there was something. There was something. It was something you couldn't see or touch, but it was something deep down inside of him that kept him moving forward. And there are some, some admirable things about this selfish son. If you think about it, you know, he was decisive, right? He, he left the pigsty. He, he stood up enough to, to say, I'm going to go back to my father, and there's nothing that's going to keep me from going back to my father. And you can decide that today. You can make that decision today to uh, to receive God's favor and God's promises in your life for your life and, and your family. I mean, think, think about this. God loves you. And, and you have this heart and this desire to know him. So why would you let anything keep you from coming home to your father today? Why would you let anything come between you and God? Uh, another th- good thing about this son is that he was, he was willing. Um, he was willing to do whatever it takes. And he knew when he went back home, I mean, he was thinking in in his head, he was thinking, I may look like a fool. I I may go back groveling, begging. Um, I'm going to look a little foolish. I may have to start working for my brother, you know, and and yet he was willing to do anything he could to just get the blessing of his father. You know, there's, there are some people, they're just too proud you know, to come to the Lord. They say, I I don't want to look foolish, and and I'm not going to admit that I was wrong. So they stay out with the pigs. (laughs) Not me. I mean, nothing is going to keep me from going back to my father's house again and again and again. So so that's the selfish son. But what a lot of people miss when they look at the, the story that Jesus told in Luke chapter 15 is that the story of this selfish son is really a setup for what Jesus is really wanting to to bring home because he was addressing those self-righteous religious leaders. And so after Jesus is saying, you know, the father throws this huge party for his selfish son who's now home and and recovered, uh, the story goes on. And here's where it gets really interesting. Here's where it picks up. In Luke 15, verse 25, Jesus says, Meanwhile, the older son was in the field. When he came near the house, he heard music and dancing. So he called one of the servants and asked him what was going on. Your brother has come, he replied, and your father has killed the fattened calf because he has him back safe and sound. The older brother became angry and refused to go in. So his father went out and pleaded with him, but he answered his father, look, all these years I've been slaving for you and never disobeyed your orders, yet you never even gave me a young goat so I could celebrate with my friends. But when this son of yours, who has squandered your property with prostitutes, comes home, you kill the fattened calf for him. The father says, my son, you are always with me, and everything I have is yours. But we had to celebrate and be glad because this brother of yours was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. I want us to talk about this son that I call the striver. Okay, there was the selfish son, but then there was the striving son. And and I think about him as as a guy who's always striving. He's always working hard. In verse 25, it says, meanwhile, as it picks up that story, meanwhile, the older son was in the field, right? He was in the, he was out in the field. He was working. He was getting it done. He was doing the stuff. And and that reminds me of a lot of religious people. 
they're always getting caught up doing the stuff, you know, singing the songs, going to the, to the classes, listening to, to sermons, you know, going through the motions, and they love to talk all about the things that they've done and all the things that they don't do. I don't know if you've ever heard this before, but, you know, the old saying is, uh, I don't drink, smoke, cuss, or chew, or date the girls that do, right? <laughs> so, I mean, it's always about do this, don't do that, do, do, that you get, you just end up with this huge pile of do, 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 do. <laughs> But when you get past the surface and you look at both of these signs, the striving son wasn't there because he loved his father. That wasn't it. He was there because he wanted something from his father. He wanted what his father had to give him, his money. They both wanted the same thing. Both sons wanted the inheritance. They just went about different ways of getting what they wanted. Think about this. The son was separated from his father too. I mean, he was out in the field. Instead of being in the house where he belonged with his father the whole time, the father wanted to have a relationship with his son. The younger brother, when he came home, he didn't go to the field. He came to the house. He came to his father's house. He said, I'm going to set out and go back to my father. Listen. Don't live in the Father's field when there's a place for you in the Father's house. Okay? Don't live in the Father's field when there's a place for you in the Father's house. When I look at this striving son, he was always on the salvation by works plan. That's, That's what he was on. He was trying to be good enough to do enough good things to save himself. And because he was always working so hard to save himself... He really didn't have time for God. (laughs) He was too busy working for God. He didn't actually have time for God. And and so when he actually goes back to see what's going on, he didn't like what he saw. He saw, they're throwing a party over there. They're having a good time. You know, people are celebrating. I I thought thought you were all supposed to be working like me. What are you doing with smiles on your faces, having, having some fun? He was mad that someone else was getting his father's attention and affection. So he answered his father, says, look, all these years I've been slaving for you. Wow, that really reveals his heart. I've been slaving for you. I've never disobeyed your orders. You know, I've done everything perfect. But when this son of yours, (laughs) it was all like, what about me? Look Look at me. I've tried to be perfect. He couldn't even call, he couldn't even say, this is my brother. He couldn't see that, that, that this bro- his brother as his brother. And I think, you know, when I look at him, I think he was probably very insecure the whole time. Yeah. You know, he's very insecure. He was never really sure if, if he was good enough, if he was ever really, all that work he was doing was, was enough. He wasn't secure in his relationship with his father. Yeah. So he's trying to earn his way earn his father's approval instead of just living as the loved son that he was. And listen, I'm not saying that it's a bad thing to work hard for God, to live for God, to to do the right things. I mean, that's good, but you got to do the heart check, right? Motive is the key. Why are you working? Is it because you want to earn God's approval and God's favor and God's love? Or is it because you know how much you are already loved by God. That you know that there's nothing that you could do that would make God love you any more or any less than he already does if you're his child. Well, that's like, you know, the religious people, you know, I can hear them sounding just like this this son. They, They say like, we've been at this church for so many years, mainly holding it back. (laughs) <laughs> Who do you think you are to come in here and, and have fun and have a party? Wow. The older brother, you know, when he came in, he's like, we got to go over the rules. We got we to gotta start checking out the rules. And the whole time, the father and the, 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 the son, the restored son, they were just wanting to celebrate the grace and the goodness and the mercy of God. And sometimes people will look at us at the Connection Church 
And, you know, whether it's they look at our, our, our few student group or they look at our Celebrate Recovery ministry or, or even look at our, our services and they're, they're like, what are those people doing there? They're like, they don't know how to dress right. They don't know how to talk right. They don't know how to act right, you know. And so they'll ask me, they'll say, well, well why, do you think, why do you think they're even here? And my response is always like, I I don't even care why they're here. I just care that they're here. Like, come on. In fact, I'm hoping that the worst of the worst show up in this place. I hope that, that every a drug addict and every porn addict and, and every thief and every liar and every person so covered up in guilt and shame that they think that when they walk in the door that the roof is going to fall in and that, you know, stand back because lightning is going to strike when they come through those doors. I, I want them to come in, and I want to look at the people who ask the question, why are they even here, and say, you know, there's even a place for hypocrites like you and, oh, and like me, yeah. <laughs> right? I just love, I love what Romans 5.20 says, because uh, it says, but where sin increased, grace increased all the more, yeah. Right? Now, now, I want you to hear me very clearly because I understand sin is a big deal. And we need to take sin very seriously. I just happen to know that the grace of God is a much, much, much bigger deal. Right? Listen, <clears throat> we can argue and we can debate all day long about who deserves to be saved and who doesn't deserve to be saved. But at the Connection Church... What we do is we celebrate Jesus and the way that he is still changing lives, right? So, you know, religious people, they criticize what they can't control. That, that's what they do. And, and that's pictured in 2 Timothy 3, 5, where Paul says that they have a form of godliness, but denying its power. He says, have nothing to do with such people. See, you don't experience God's power by standing at the door and and saying, okay, you can come in, and you're welcome, and not you, you stay outside. That's not how it works. You, you experience God's power by saying, everybody come in, everybody is welcome, and let's see what God can do in your life. And I, I think the biggest tragedy in this whole story is verse 28. Biggest tragedy is, is this. It says, the older brother became angry, and he refused to go in. He was so busy earning the spiritual points and judging other people, but when the time came for him to put down his tools and just come into the presence of the Father, he just got mad. Wow. He just got confused. And if you've been serving God for a long time, don't be distracted by how other people are coming to faith in Jesus. Just realize that the Father has enough grace for both the older son and the younger son. Right. You know, I gave up trying to do God's job a long time ago. Now I'm just happy to be his son. Come on. Wow. I just want to be a part of his family. Now you've got the two sons. You've got the selfish son. You've got the striving son. But the story really comes down to the salvation of the father, the salvation that the father offers. See, salvation in this story is summed up in one phrase. He says, everything I have is yours. Everything I have is yours. And you think about that selfish son. He had his speech already. He said in verse 18, I will set out and go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven, against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired servants. He doesn't get half of that apology out of his mouth. Okay? He, he actually says, Father, I've sinned, this is in 21, I've sinned against heaven, against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, quick, bring the best robe and put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Bring the fattened calf and kill it. Let's have a feast and celebrate. For this son of mine was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found. So they began to celebrate. You know, he was ready to start just begging his way back into the field, but the father welcomed him into the house, wow. into the family. Look at what the father does next. He gives him a robe. 
He gives them the gift of a robe. And, and that is a, a symbol of restoration. It was a visible sign of full restoration and the full rights of being a son. You know, they got that robe. I'm sure they got it out of dad's bedroom, right? Isaiah 61.10 says, I delight greatly in the Lord. My soul rejoices in my God, for he has clothed me with garments of salvation and arrayed me in a robe of his righteousness. When you're saved, you get new clothes, right? I'm not, I don't mean physical, literal, literal, literal clothes, but symbolically and spiritually, God covers you from head to toe in his goodness, okay? And then, he, he puts the ring on his finger. And the ring is a symbol of authority. What the ring means is that the father gave the son his position of authority back to him. And he was able to use that ring. That ring was like a seal that you could use on, on behalf of the family business. And I'm sure there were other family members, other, uh, other um, servants, you know, neighbors, people who were talking and they were, they were probably talking about him, just, is he really worthy? Is he really worthy to be part of the family, to be back? But whenever they would ask, he'd say, uh, look at my ring. I got a ring. That means I'm a full heir. Uh, and it settled the issue. But then also, the father gave him shoes. And, and the shoes were a symbol of freedom. The shoes immediately restored and elevated him above the position of a servant. He instantly became free. That, that very thing that he was searching for when he left home was his freedom, and that's what he received when he came back. He wasn't sent into the field to work off what he owed his father. He wasn't given a lecture. He wasn't being compared to the older son. Okay, the father threw open his arms. He ran out to meet him. He killed the fatted calf. He had a, a celebration, put a robe on his back, put a ring on his finger, put shoes on his feet, and said, my son has come home, and you can come home. You can come home today. Maybe you would say, you know, I've been that selfish son, and I was looking for freedom. And, and you need to know that, that you can find freedom when you come home today. There, there are no lectures. There's no penalties. There's just grace and mercy. Maybe you see yourself more in the striving son. You also can come into the house today. You don't have to work to earn God's love and his favor because Jesus did all the work for you. You can stop living life on the outside looking in, looking at the party going on inside. The Father wants you to enter into his presence so that you can experience the fullness of his joy and of his favor and of his grace and mercy. I know that the Bible, you know, it's a, it's a pretty big book and it can be hard to understand sometimes. But this story that Jesus told really sums up the whole story of Jesus and how much he loves you. Many people look at a story like the prodigal son and they say, well, all religions kind of have a story like that, you know. But that's not true. Other religions all say that you have to work your way back to God. You have to earn your way back in. You, deserve, you get what's coming to you. You deserve what you get. They call it karma, right? Which means what goes around comes around. But the story of every other religion is man's attempt to get to God. But the story of Jesus is that he came all the way from heaven so that you could have a connection and a relationship with him. Listen, everybody's not a child of God. I know we hear that, you know, in culture a lot. You know, we're all God's children. Well, everybody was created by God, but everybody is not a child of God. The ones who are his children are the ones who've come home, and they've placed their faith and their trust in the finished work of Jesus done on the cross when he gave his life for you so that you could be forgiven. And then he rose again so that, so that you could have hope in your life, you could have purpose and meaning in your life, and that he would secure a home for you in heaven forever. And today is the day that you can start a brand new relationship and a new connection 
with your Father because of what the Son, because of what Jesus did for you so that you can come into the house of God. You can come into God's forever family and you can do that today. Let's pray together. Heavenly Father, Lord, we love you and we thank you, God, that, uh, that your word is true. God, that you love us. God, that no matter how far we've run, it's just a step back home to you. God, and I pray for those who would see themselves as this selfish son who say, who say I-, I want my freedom, but I've been pursuing it in my own way. And today's my day to come home to my father. Thank you for for sending Jesus to give his life for me. Maybe today you would see yourself as the striving son and you thought that religion was all about how good you could be, that it was all about checking off a bunch of boxes and rules. God, today, thank you for your truth that you love us not because of anything that we've done, but because of what Jesus has done for us. So, If I see myself as that striving son today, I'm saying, I want to surrender to you. And I ask that I would receive your free gift of salvation that I can't can't work for, I can't earn, but I just receive you into my heart and my life. Thank you that you would want to have a relationship with me. I ask that you would make me part of your forever family, that you would change me from the inside out. And from now on, I want to just follow you, walking with you in relationship with you from now on. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right, so good. Well, thank you so much for being with us today. And if you prayed to trust in Jesus, I want to encourage you right now. Would you just text the word Jesus to 512-359-3400? That's Jesus, 512-359-3400. Uh, Let us know in the comments. Hit that button that says, I accepted Jesus. I trust in Jesus today. We're celebrating with you just like the angels in heaven are celebrating right now. And we welcome you into the family. We can't wait to see you again real soon. So have a blessed week and we'll see you next Sunday. Wow, what an amazing Sunday it has been. We're so excited that you joined us today for church. I want to remind you, join a group. Virtual groups are open. I want you to go ahead and text the word group to 512-359-3400. Don't discredit the community, even if, even if it's virtual. It's still a community. I want you to be together, be connected, and be engaged in what God is doing in your life. Also, watch parties. I want you to go to connectionchurch.org backslash watch parties. You can find all the frequently asked questions about watch parties. I got a pro tip for you. If you're doing a watch party, in the morning. I want you to go ahead and have breakfast items ready. Bring, tell people to bring some breakfast. It's less work on you and more fun for everybody else when food is involved for sure. They'll find a group just for you and I hope you join the watch party. So I want you to remember that we love you. We're praying for you and always continue to stay connected. We'll see you next week. Hope you have the best week ever.